Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the blessed and significant city of Medina Al Munawwara. I'm currently standing in this amazing, gorgeous place called the Garden of Salman Al Farsi. And as you can see, all these palm trees around me. And there's an incredible history here. And that's why I've come here. But before I go into explaining about the garden, um, I think it's really crucial kind of to understand the story behind the garden or behind the person that's associated with this garden and trust me when I say this guys this place is truly a hidden gem a lot of people don't know about this place I mean I've been to Medina this is my third time in Medina and the two times before this I've never heard of it um, maybe in the tours they might fly past it really quickly or something and just explain something really small or just drive past it uh, but I've never actually come into this place before so it's an incredible incredible site one with immense history and really uh, bringing to life a companion that is kind of sometimes underrated really so I'm sure pretty much all of you have heard of the companion Salman Al Farsi now this garden is associated with him for a particular reason but before I get into that particular reason let me just tell you a little bit about Salman Al Farsi and then I'll show you the garden it's in, stay with me because the garden is incredible um, and you know it's such a peaceful place as you can see there's a lot of shade like constantly you'll see my the, the, the sunlight won't be hitting my face anymore and so you can see already here the water kind of passing through and it kind of reaches the areas where the trees are and yeah anyways before I get into the actual garden let me just tell you a little bit about Salman Farsi you may already know you may not know much about Salman Farsi but Salman Farsi was an incredible incredible figure in Islamic history um, he if you look at his name Salman Al Farsi Farsi actually means uh, Persian so he was he was a Persian uh, you know and he lived uh, in he was born in Isfahan which is in modern day Iran and he was born into a devout kind of fire worshipping family his uh, father was a fire worshipper and um, so was his entire family and for that reason he was raised like that naturally but throughout his life especially when he was younger um, he kind of had callings for other things he, it didn't settle with him this idea of fire worshipping and so for that reason he did go out searching for um, other lifestyles other religions other ways of lives um, so he eventually came across uh, Christianity and he seemed to really like it um, and that was a religion at that time so he settled with the Christians and eventually his father did find out that he was um, you know uh, exploring other avenues uh, other religions and so he did uh, apparently uh, he tortured him he kind of locked him up as well now eventually Salman Farsi uh, made a quick getaway and he went to he was told that there's a scholar or there's a priest in the Levant area where Syria Lebanon these places and so he made his way there and he spent time with a priest over there Christian priest and he started learning a lot more about the religion of Christianity and then eventually he that priest uh, was about to pass away and he told him to go to a place called Mosul in Iraq uh, and he was uh, told to go and find a priest there a Christian priest there who was supposed to be devout spend some time with him so he did exactly that he went to Mosul Iraq he spent some time with a priest and then eventually that priest also uh, became ill and he was unable to um, serve uh, Salman Farsi uh, so Salman Farsi was told by the priest before he passed away that you what you need to do is you need to go to a place uh, in Arabia the land of Arabia and I believe he told him to go to a place where there's uh, the place of palm trees or um, he just generally said go to Arabia so Salman Farsi now started searching for different ways that he could get there from right up north near Mosul and the Levant area and he found you know caravans is the best option so he eventually went to um, ask around and you know people probably made offers and he settled with a caravan now this caravan obviously told that uh, told Salman Faris that we'll, yeah, we'll take you to Medina I mean we'll take you because I don't think he was called Medina at that time we'll take you to the city and um, that's fine but what they didn't tell him was that they were actually going to make him a slave so he did he had no idea so eventually he became a slave and he ended up right here in this place in Medina Al Munawwara which like I said is like 15 minutes drive from Masjid Nabawi 
I think I mentioned that at the beginning. So it's not too far from Masjid Nabawi. It's like if you take a taxi, it's about 10, 15 minutes. But whatever the case, at that time, it was significantly far from where the Prophet uh, resided. So he came here and he worked as a slave in this very place. He worked as a slave for years and his owner was from the Banu Qurayza tribe. Um, uh, which was a, a tribe that was settled here in Medina, I believe. And he worked for them. He worked for the owner of that tribe um, for, for, I believe, years. But he wanted to spend more time with the Prophet ﷺ because he didn't get to take part in things like Bal of Badr and, you know, the, the, the Battle of Uhud and things like that. So he wanted to spend more time with the, with the Prophet ﷺ, So he had to find a way to do that. Now, just before I explain further, um, Salman Farisi actually did his homework and he was well known for researching before he did anything. And so he was told that this, the Prophet will have three signs by this Mosuli, the person, the priest in Mosul told him that the priest will have three signs. And these, the first one is that he won't eat from charity. The second one is he'll take gifts. And the third one is that he'll have a mark, uh, the seal of prophethood on his back. Now, Salman Farsi tried giving him charity. It didn't work. But when he came with a gift, it did work. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, ate some and he gave it to his companions. With the charity, he just gave it to his companions. But with, and lastly, with the seal of the prophethood, um, Salman Farsi was actually, there's a place not far from here. When the Prophet ﷺ first came to Medina from Makkah, he, when he kind of he developed and built uh, Masjid al Quba, and near Masjid al Quba, there's a there's actually a like kind of a well there, and there's a spot there uh, where the Prophet ﷺ resided for a little while before the people of Medina, Aus and, uh, Aus and Khazraj tribe, they came and they uh, they picked him up, and now the the Prophet ﷺ was residing there and. Uh, Salman Farisi picked up that oh he's residing there so let me go and visit him before he makes his way to Medina so I can find that seal of prophethood so he was standing behind the Prophet وسلم, trying to kind of have a look to see because the Prophet was wearing kind of a light garment at that time and you could probably make out if he does have the seal of prophethood there and then eventually um, the Prophet وسلم, realized and he called Salman Farisi and he showed it to him so that kind of solidified and confirmed things for Salman Farisi but anyways coming back to the story he worked here he was working here for the Jewish slave the Jewish master sorry from the Banu Banu Qurayza tribe and eventually uh, Salman Farsi wanted to buy his freedom because he was sick and tired of it and so what he did he told he went to the Prophet ﷺ and he told him look I want to buy my freedom can you help me out so the Prophet ﷺ said okay that's fine I will I will of course I will help you out now the master the Jewish master had laid down an agreement and he said a condition for freedom he said you have to plant 300 palm trees now that's a stupid amount of palm trees to plant it's going to take years and years before it becomes free and he has to also give 40 ounces of gold it's, it's just like unrealistic goals he's setting because he knows that it's not going to work so when when salman farsi went to the prophet and he told him that the prophet said go and dig the holes and i will come myself and plant the palm trees and that's exactly what the prophet did and as you can see here all these trees here initially the palm trees that were here Obviously, palm trees don't live for that long. The palm trees that were here, they were uh, planted by the Prophet Sallallahu himself. And so the Prophet Sallallahu planted them himself and he had a, like a golden egg sort of thing. And he, it was, the condition was that he has to also give 40 ounces of gold. So the Prophet Sallallahu gave him this and then Salman Farsi was able to, um, you know, buy his, buy his way out, buy his freedom. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stepped foot right in this place and that's why this place is significant because the Prophet ﷺ came himself and he planted the palm trees that you see well not the ones that you see around here but he planted palm trees here and it's an incredible place because Salman Farsi just imagine he was you know he was staying here he was working here he walked here and you know he took care of this place and companions came and they would plant they would dig holes and the Prophet ﷺ would come himself and he would plant the trees and so obviously these trees here that you can see around me they are all trees from they are like considered the grandchildren of the trees that are planted by the Prophet ﷺ. but the kind of the system here is incredible I mean you've got some parts which are dry obviously and I think it's the season at the moment for the dates which is in which is amazing and we'll go and have a look to see if we can uh, find the place where they sell them and um, so the water passes around it feeds the trees and yeah, it's just an incredible sight. I mean, it's so peaceful here. Um, it's like um, constantly you'll find shade. Um, and one of the things I found is that as well is that 
as you can see around there's there's nobody here hardly uh, it's an incredibly quiet quiet place it's a lot bigger than this it carries on all the way over there and I mean some some visitors do come that come for Umrah and for Hajj but very very less people and so I feel like it's, a, it's one of the kind of biggest hidden gems here amongst other sites in Medina Al Munawwara and I really think it deserves more attention because this place is incredible it has so much history so as you can see um, all this water around it incredible kind of irrigation system here and then you have like I'm not sure how many trees there are here right now but back then obviously there were 300 and incredibly it was a miracle they grew really quick and um, obviously Salman Farsi then he took part in the, the battle of uh, trench the Khandaq battle which is incredible as well because um, you know Salman Farsi was known as the creative Sahaba because you know when it came time for the, there were several battles in Islam and one of them was called the Battle of Khandaq which is the Battle of Trench and Salman Farsi was like the the top leader in that he basically suggested to ward off the enemies or to get rid of the enemies what we do is Medina has certain areas which are lower and you can build a trench around it and so he recommended that to the Prophet Islam and the Prophet took that on board and it was a very successful battle for the Muslims and so for that reason Salman Farsi was one of the most underrated Sahaba because you know he he made some amazing achievements he he achieved a great great deal and he made some uh, amazing kind of like moves uh, when it came, comes to the success of Islam and the thing is he's he came from a, a long line of like not a long line but he came from a very kind of absurd background and look where he ended up like from fire worshipping to Islam it's an incredible transition to go from fire worshipping to Christianity to Islam and you know he he wasn't a person who just accepted things when he saw them he did his research as well so this place is definitely one of the places that you should come and visit if you're coming to Medina Al Munawwara like I said you can you can take a taxi for you can take a taxi for around maybe I think 20 rials and they'll drop you off right here if you tell them I want to go to the Mazra'a see Mazra'a Salman Al Farsi they should be able to uh, help you out if you have your own car you can come here I'm not sure if they pay for park if they charge for parking here um, they probably do I'm not sure uh, but yeah um, you'll still see some farmers here um, the garden there's a school right here called Madrasa Hussein Ibn Ali Al Ibtidaiya so just in case you want to tell the driver where you should come but yeah it's a it's an amazing site I'm gonna take you around to the place where um, it's kind of difficult to walk here sometimes because the water is very close but you can see this water very calmly passing through and if you've never seen a palm tree close up here it is incredible look how tall that is so I'll just walk around a little bit without talking so you can really take it all in and you can see here I'll just quickly tell you they've got these things here so the water doesn't pass around here too much so old methods don't die hard Now you can see they've set up these sofas and everything for these visitors which is quite nice and there's another I think a well or I think there's a this water section over here I'll just show you just over there and so the water from there actually comes down and passes through these areas and it kind of then passes through to the trees and uh, yeah that's how they uh, basically grow so it's incredible this constant flow of water here as you can see just here and look even they've got these really old steps as well and this place is just super amazing look how nice and clear this water is gets brought in from this pipe here 
and then you've got brothers uh, selling dates here so here are the if you want to buy dates because the dates actually I believe from this garden here just inside the garden they take the dates off and they bring them here so they've got several dates here so I'll quickly go and show you what kind of dates they have here let's have a look Assalamu alaikum Ajwa Safawi Kul Shay Mojud yeah, so these dates are all from the garden. So we have. Ma, uh, Ismail? 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 One kg. One kg. So fifty kg for I mean sorry, fifty real for one kg Hada? Hada sixty Sixty real for one kg for Hada? Forty real. Forty real for Ambarin. Ambarin, no? Ambar, these are Majdul. So you can definitely come here and buy dates if you're interested. So I might I might get some in a little while. So um uh, and half kg? Okay, okay. Half kg inshallah. So I'll just get half kg of Safawi dates. Safawi dates are one of my favorites, so I'm gonna try that. But yeah, the people of Medina, the Arab people, they know much more about their dates. Uh, there's so many different types of dates here. Um living in UK and stuff, we don't really have much exposure to these sorts of things. So one second I'm gonna pay now. So yeah, I just uh, I just got some safari dates. So they're here, half a kg. Uh, can't wait to try these bad boys. So yeah, Jazakallah khair. Salam alaikum. So yeah, what do you guys think of the garden of Salman al-Farsi? Incredible place, you can come out with some incredible dates and definitely an underrated site. So 100% recommend that if you do come to Medina al munawwara you check this place out, come and explore. And really it's quite, it's quite nice to, yeah, apart from the high-rise buildings and uh, you know, the kind of uh, um, the modern side of uh, Medina that we see, we don't really get to, we don't really have this kind of thing of exploring beyond uh, Masjid Nabawi. Masjid Nabawi, don't get me wrong, you have to. I mean, if there's anything to do when you come to Medina, it's spend time in Masjid Nabawi. But if you're interested in the history of the city, if you're interested in exploring and learning a bit more about the Islamic history and heritage of Medina, definitely expand and kind of travel to these places. And that's the whole point of these um, hidden gem videos is to show you these places that they exist and they are ready for visitors and you can see there's hardly any visitors here people are very friendly here this place has this place has um, a lot to see a lot to walk around and it's not congested as well so definitely i recommend coming here if you're in uh, medina al munawwara so i'm gonna call it quits on this video for now and i uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this tour hope you guys found it beneficial um, I'm not gonna ask you to uh, like, subscribe or, or comment because I know that you're already gonna do it. So please be sure to like, comment and subscribe as well for more content like this. Um, it's been incredible coming here, I've really enjoyed it. Um, and definitely it's a place that I would come back again and again just to ponder and reflect and walk around this place and learn a bit more about Salman Farsi, kind of bring to life the lives of the Sahaba and the Sahaba themselves and you can almost like picture the Prophet ﷺ walking around here picture Salman Farsi walking around here picture the companions coming and digging the holes of these places and they're still farmers they do exactly the same thing um, here there were just a few of them they've gone away for lunch now I think so yeah 100% come to um, the garden of Salman Farsi it's not too far from Masjid Nabawi incredible place incredible history incredible people incredible dates here as well fresh dates taken from these uh, from these palm trees anyways for now i'll let you guys go uh, please be sure to do your thing with the like subscribe and sharing and commenting and all that stuff and inshallah i should be back with more videos soon take care and 
goodbye and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh from the blessed and significant city of Medina al Munawwar. And by the way, if you've if you've been before, may Allah bring you back again. And if you have never been before, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the love of these places bring you to this amazing amazing tranquil calm city of the prophet sallallahu anyways take care i'll see you guys in another video assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh